Hello, my name is Atif Darush, professor of OBGYN Asset University, Egypt. Today we would like to discuss an important practical topic in the field of endoscopy, which is called cervicoscopy. And cervicoscopy is uh, actually defined as hysteroscopic examination of the cervix, which means using the hysteroscopic telescope to examine the cervix. And this definition is different from colposcopy, which means magnification of the cervix after uh, uh, application of the uh, colposcope, which is a stationary uh, machine uh, stands on the uh, ground. So colposcopy is just magnification of the cervix you and binocular visualization of cervix or video uh, colposcopy, while cervicoscopy is hysteroscopic examination of the cervix for proper evaluation. Uh, both uh, colposcopy and cervicoscopy aim at screening for pre-malignant cervical lesions and proper treatment of these lesions in a very early stage. You know that Cancer cervix is a preventable disease when you uh, detect pre-malignant uh, lesions and you treat them properly. Uh, this case will be saved from going into the stages of invasiveness. So I'd like to perform a cervicoscopy as we mentioned, hysteroscopic examination of the cervix. What are the uh, requirements, the prerequisites for doing proper cervicoscopy and to make a good report on this case. You should have a basic experience in performing diagnostic hysteroscopy. You should know that you need a telescope and an outer sheath and a light cable connected to a light source in addition to an indoor camera. This requirements are essential to perform cervicoscopy. What's different from doing diagnostic hysteroscopy uh, and cervicoscopy? The difference is that in cases of cervicoscopy, usually we don't need fluid distension to see the cervix. You can see it without uh, uh, fluid. But in hysteroscopy, you should do fluid distension to make distension of the uh, endometrial cavity and if you use the same instrument for vaginoscopy you should make uh, vulvar tightness to be able to visualize vulvar lesions so we should have a hysteroscope and hysteroscope may be conventional hysteroscope if you have it in your OR okay you can use it the conventional hysteroscope is 4 mm telescope and 5 mm outer sheath. And if you are working in the outpatient clinic, you can have an office hysteroscope, which is a smaller in caliber than conventional hysteroscope. You can use 2.6 mm telescope and 3.2 mm outer sheath. So you can use both conventional and uh, office hysteroscopes for this purpose and actually it does not differ because you will uh, go uh, to see the cervix but the advantage of hysteroscope makes office hysteroscopy more advantageous than conventional hysteroscopy because office hysteroscopy has a small caliber so you can go through the cervical canal and the endometrial cavity with this small caliber endoscope without prior cervical dilatation. So office cervicoscopy is more advantageous than conventional cervicoscopy if you are working in the outpatient clinic. And if you are doing office hysteroscopy with this small caliber telescope, it can be standard as usual. You can make a grasping of the cervix by a tenaculum and put a speculum like Collins speculum and this is the conventional approach for standard office hysteroscopy. 
Or you can use vaginoscopic office hysteroscopy, which means you do office cervicoscopy or hysteroscopy without grasping the cervix, without putting a speculum, and you introduce the telescope inside the vagina from the start and see what's inside the vagina until you reach the cervix to perform cervicoscopy. So this is the first prerequisite to perform a cervicoscopy, to have a hysteroscopy, and to have a basic knowledge of how to handle the hysteroscope, how to perform hysteroscope, because hysteroscopic examination actually is a part of cervicoscopy. And this is an advantage of cervicoscopy over corposcopy. The second prerequisite to perform cervicoscopy is to know what's normal and what's abnormal if you look to the cervix what's normal and what's abnormal the problem of many gynecologists that they are not aware of what's normal and what's abnormal if you look to this figure on the right side you will see the cervix and the ectocervix and the endocervix and you can see the uh, epithelium on the left side Covering the ectocervix is called the original or native squamous epithelium. And inside the internal os, you will see the external os, you will see the columnar epithelium. So you can see the native squamous epithelium and columnar epithelium. In between columnar epithelium and native squamous epithelium is an area which is called transformation zone. And transformation zone means the, the zone in, in which the columnar epithelium will be transformed into squamous epithelium. So we will have two types of squamous epithelium. Squamous epithelium, which is the native, the original squamous epithelium of most of the ectocervix, and new squamous epithelium formed after transformation of the columnar epithelium into squamous epithelium. This area of transformation zone actually is called an area of metaplasia. And metaplasia is defined as change of any type of epithelium into the other. In this case, the columnar epithelium will be changed into squamous epithelium. And the process of metaplasia actually is an active process of transforming one type of epithelium to another type. And at this area of transformation zone, there is high possibility uh, to be normal epithelium after from transformation from columnar to squamous. But in some rare cases, the metaplasia will develop or will lead to, uh, due to its activity, will lead to formation of abnormal pathway of the cells and starting of the cervical intraepithelial neoplasia or dysplasia will start and this case will be transformed not only from columnar epithelium to squamous epithelium but from columnar epithelium to uh, dysplasia which is mild moderate and severe and later on will be cis which is cervical intraepithelium uh, 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 which is a carcinoma in situ carcinoma in situ so we have to realize that the area of metaplasia is the most important area in the cervix. You have to look it properly. You have to evaluate this area properly. Otherwise, you will miss, you will miss a case of CIN or CIS. And this case, if missed, and you report that this case is normal, and she goes home thereafter, she may develop CIN or even carcinoma in situ or cancer cervix. In the area of metaplasia, there is activity and you can see some bizarre appearance of columnar epithelium islands inside the squamous epithelium. So the uh, uh, area of metaplasia is bizarre, is not regular, is irregular. And actually you have to define the original squamous columnar junction, which is uh, native uh, junction between the squamous and columnar epithelium and the new squamous columnar junction after transformation uh, into the uh, squamous epithelium. 
In the area of metaplasia, you can see some dots. These white dots are called the gland openings, which means uh, signifies that in under these gland openings, there are crypts of columnar epithelium uh, uh, will be changed uh, by into squamous epithelium after creeping of the squamous epithelium uh, to uh, surround these islands of columnar epithelium. Another prerequisite to perform cervicoscopy is that you have to uh, have some knowledge about endocervical canal. You should go inside the endocervical canal, which is usually uh, around less one, uh, than one inch in uh, most of females, and you should know how to examine the endocervical canal. The examination of the endocervical canal, when you go forward into the uterus, you should wait some time until the distension of the cervical canal. If you use fluid, the fluid is helpful in such cases, and it should be used with fluid if you go inside the cervix of the uterus. And the fluid, which should usually is saline, uh, will distend the cervix to see the mucosa, and this mucosa uh, will form, uh, will be seen as crypts, will, will not be seen as a regular lining it will form crypts, and these crypts are called arbor vitae, in which the mucus of the cervical canal is formed, and in which the sperms will be uh, stored until the time of fertilization when the sperms go into cohorts and wash the endometrial cavity frequently to, uh, to be uh, able to fertilize the oocytes in the ambulla. So the mucosa is irregular, forming plicae or arborvitae, and you have to wait until the extension of the cervical canal. Most importantly, you can you have to re-examine the endocervical canal when you are going out from the endometrial cavity because the cervical canal at that time is properly seen better than seeing the cervical canal when you are going forward. Another prerequisite to perform cervicoscopy, you should have some basic principles of colposcopy. If you are not aware of colposcopic examination, you will not perform cervicoscopy in a proper manner. You should be aware that in colposcopy, we have different techniques. We have saline technique, washing the cervix with uh, saline to have a naked eye examination of the cervix and then magnified naked eye of the cervix to see the vasculature, any uh, gross lesion like polyp, like ectopy, ectropion, uh, and so on. So the saline technique is very important to see the cervix without application of any other material. Thereafter, you have to paint the cervix with acetic acid and the acetic acid is uh, uh, cheap and should be available in the operating room or the, in the uh, office if you are performing colposcopy or cervicoscopy. And the acetic acid stains the cells with high protein contents, so it will stain columnar epithelium and not stain the native squamous epithelium. The area of metaplasia, which is transforming columnar into uh, uh, squamous, will take the stain of acetic acid and you can see the epithelium taking acetic acid is white and if not taking it is as its normal color. <coughs> also you have to apply Schiller's iodine dye and this is called Schiller's iodine test. The iodine will be taken by cells of high glycogen content and these cells are actually the squamous epithelium. So if the Schiller's iodine test is positive, means that you are uh, uh, seeing cells without taking the glycogen, uh, the iodine, due to poor glycogen content, and these cells are columnar epithelium and metaplastic uh, area of transformation zone. If the cells will take the dye and will become brown, it is original squamous due to poor glycogen content. So, acetic acid test is the reverse of Schiller's iodine test. If you apply acetic acid, it will be taken by the columnar and metaplasia. And if you apply Schiller's iodine dye, it will be taken by native squamous epithelium and will not be taken by the columnar and uh, 
metaplasia. And the same rule applies for any abnormal growth in the cervix like uh, mosaicism or uh, punctation or any local focal lesion in cervix which is CIN or HPV viral infection. All these lesions will not take the dye of the uh, Schiller's iodine and will take the dye of acetic acid uh, and will become white in color. The difference between abnormal areas of the CIN and the metaplasia is the border. You have to look to the border of the area of acetic acid application. If it is sharp border, it is usually pathologic and you have to take a biopsy. Another important issue of colposcopy is to perform endocervical canal assessment. And actually, in, if you are using stationary colposcopy, you should use another tool to see what's inside the endocervical canal. And usually we use endocervical speculum or make counter pressure with Q-tip uh, sticks. And lastly, you have to master the technique of taking bunch biopsy from the, uh, any abnormal uh, colposcopic uh, uh, examination. Now we will perform cervicoscopy. We have a basic knowledge of how to handle hysteroscope and basic knowledge of what's normal in cervix and what's abnormal. We have a basic knowledge of colposcopy and now I'll go to do uh, uh, cervicoscopy. The commonest lesion that should be uh, uh, put in mind when you are doing cervicoscopy in many cases in up to 90% of cases of abnormal cervicoscopic uh, findings is to see ectopy. And ectopy is defined as ectopic columnar epithelium. A columnar epithelium should be present inside the endocervical canal. If you see it outside the endocervical canal on the ecto cervix, it's called ectopy. It is ectopic columnar epithelium, like ectopic pregnancy and ectopic endometrium in cases of endometriosis. And in addition to be associated with some cases of inflammation like cervicides and endocervicides and uh, some cases of postcoital bleeding, cervical ectopy may be a precursor of cervical metaplasia because this ectopic columnar epithelium should be changed into squamous epithelium under the process of metaplasia. So the metaplasia is the uh, active stage or active process in the cervix and sometimes the cells will go into another abnormal pathway of CIN or CIS development. And in this video you can see the cervicoscopy there is excessive discharge, it is an inflammatory uh, cervix and you can put uh, uh, Lugol's iodine and you see the uh, abnormal metaplasia uh, did not take the dye and the squamous epithelium takes the brown dye. Another video of picture of another case and you can see the cervix by cervicoscopy with multiple follicles. One of them is big in the center of the screen and this is called Nabosian cyst and usually filled with uh, mucus secretion and there is a controversy regarding treating these uh, nebothium follicles some authors mentioned you have to drain them by cervical cauterizations others deny this approach in this case you can go with the telescope inside the cervical canal until you go to the endometrial cavity and this is the advantage of cervicoscopy over colposcopy you can see the fundus of the uterus and endometrium is very vascular and congested. The abnormal vasculature or excessive vasculature of the endometrium signify the uh, inflammation of the endometrium and this is endometrites. And this is very important advantage of cervicoscopy over colposcopy. You can go inside the endometrial cavity inside the cervix and you can see the tuber ostia and any lesion and here in this case you see excessive vascularity of the endometrium which is not normal signifying endometrites and so you change the diagnosis from just cervicides into cervicides and endometrites 
and you know endometritis is a part of pelvic inflammatory disease so you have to treat this case properly because endometritis should be aggressively treated by antibiotics otherwise uh, serious sequelae uh, uh, of uh, PID will occur so the advantage of cervicoscopy is that you evaluate the whole genital system the endometrium the internal os the tubal ostia the cervix in addition to the cervix while corposcopy is just examination of cervix and you can go inside the endocervical canal just a small area using endocervical speculum so here comes the advantages of cervicoscopy in this uh, case another case you can examine a case using wearing UCD and you can see the cervix with cervicoscopy with some lesions in, on the cervix and these white lesions are actually condyloma in the anterior fornix also you can see uh, uh, polypoidal lesion condylomatous lesion in the anterior fornix of cervix as well so this case has condyloma and these lesions in the anterior fornix and here is the cervix also with these lesions you should put acetic acid dye to take this will take white uh, this will take white color as I told you this is acetic acid test and they become white while the native uh, ethereum did not take the reverse is uh, in the case of Schiller's iodine the dye will be taken by the native squamous and the lesion will be iodine uh, negative uh, and this test is positive in such a case you should take a biopsy you have to be trained on taking cervical biopsy from these lesions in the fornix and on the ectocervix from the transformation zone or metaplasia and you can control bleeding from these punches by applying of uh, trichloroacetic acid or sometimes diathermy to control this minimal bleeding uh, or after uh, pressure you can control it also with pressure uh, using a piece of gauze in this case you can see the endocervical canal with a tiny lesion this is a tiny lesion endocervical polyp how can you see it by the session colposcopy this cannot be seen by session colposcopy the same case of abnormal bleeding you can go into the cervical canal and you can see a polyp inside the cervical canal properly seen uh, coming from the internal os how can you see this polyp if you use the session colposcopy the cervicoscopy in such a case going inside the endocervical canal and you can distend it with fluid and you can see the polyp uh, and this is the pedicle of the polyp coming from the endocervical canal and you can excise it while the uh, uh, operative uh, cervicoscopy and this is polyp seeing inside is seen inside the cervical canal which will never be seen by stationary colposcopy the endocervical speculum is just to see just one centimeter or one and a half centimeter cervix but the cervix is 2.5 centimeters and these are clear advantages of the cervicoscopy another case you can see the cervix after application of acetic acid you can see mosaic appearance this mosaic is due to invasion of the epithelium by the stromal blood vessels forming the mosaic appearance sometimes the blood vessels form uh, punctation due to uh, invasion of the blood vessels into the epithelium and after application of acetic acid these lesions are iodine negative and you have to take a biopsy as well and these lesions should be sent these tissues should be sent to histopathology and you can control bleeding by application of a pressure or uh, trichloroacetic acid or sometimes diaphermy some authors used cervicoscopy after a staining of cervix and uh, the stain is mycelium blue dye uh, so you can use uh, acetic acid to see acetic acid uh, uh, acetohyte areas you can use mycelium blue dye to see iodine uh, negative and iodine positive areas and you can apply methylene blue to see the cells of the who t which take the dye and actually methylene blue it is applied if you are doing uh, mag more magnification of cells and this is actually is called uh, uh, colpomicroscopy 
or ser corpo uh, uh, cervical microscopy and you have to use a special lens uh, which magnifies up to 80 percent which is a motor uh, uh, telescope and you can see the cells and uh, after application of the dye uh, these are abnormal cells uh, seen by the micro colposcopy and cervicoscopy uh, in low cell patients uh, after uh, it is the classification. So after seeing these cases and after having this basic knowledge about cervicoscopy, you can see the advantages of cervicoscopy over pap smear and colposcopy. The cervicoscopy is advantageous over pap smears. Pap smear is a simple test can be done by the patient herself at home and send, fix it at home and send the smear by post uh, to the centers. Okay, it is an easy approach. It is uh, appropriate for screening tools, but uh, it is uh, uh, it has some limitations like false negative rates in up to 20% of cases, inadequate sampling of the transformation zone, Poor collection and fixation of the specimen is encountered in many cases, inclusion of blood clots uh, or inflammatory material or necrotic uh, debris will obscure or preclude the correct cytologic diagnosis and deficient cytologists and well equipped laboratory are clear disadvantages of performing pap smear, uh, particularly in developing countries or uh, in uh, district areas without uh, these facilities. Uh, colposcopy, of course, is a gold standard diagnostic tool of cervical lesions, particularly taking biopsies and colposcopically guided uh, biopsy is the uh, ultimate diagnosis of any pre-malignant or malignant cervical lesion. And it allows better description of the blood vessels uh, by saline technique and gland openings like Kishi et al. classification and others. It allows more details of cervical lesions due to controlled magnification, free both hands of surgeon, allowing delicate maneuvers, including taking cervical biopsies, steady uh, view devoid of tremors effects. These are the advantages of this gold standard technique, however. Colposcopy may be unsatisfactory in many cases, particularly those with cervical stenosis or those are, who are postmenopausal with natural uh, cervical stenosis and the columnar epithelium regresses inside the endocervical canal. So now leprous women and postmenopausal women are actually uh, uh, are difficulties for colposcopic examination. In such cases, you can use endocervical speculum as seen in this figure, but the, it adds little value. As I told you, it uh, just opens the, the proximal, uh, the distal part of the cervix, and it is not possible to apply it actually in a leprous women or postmenopausal women due to severe pain after application. And actually, it is not possible because it has a little bit broad uh, blades. You can do endocervical curettage if you are not seeing the endocervical canal, and this is another aggressive and invasive procedure with excessive bleeding, pain, and it is actually it is applying technique. It's not uh, realized as a good uh, modern technique for evaluation of the endocervical canal. These are clear disadvantages of colposcopy, and the uh, diagnostic difficulties of PEP and colposcopy make Inadequate evaluation of the endocervical canal is a clear disadvantage. In addition to endocervical new formations and transformations in deep glandular cells are not seen in both uh, techniques, whether colposcopy or pap smear. And the cervicoscopy allows you to go inside the endocervical canal and to see the epithelium properly. And you see the upper vitae, the uh, polyp, like I, I, so, I, uh, I already uh, demonstrated a tiny polyp inside the endocervical canal that cannot be seen by any other techniques than cervicoscopy. So, in conclusion of this talk, you can uh, find that cervicoscopy is a promising uh, tool for uh, uh, diagnosis of uh, cases of pre-malignant cervical lesions.
before saying the advantages, the disadvantages of cervicoscopy are clear. It is not a tool for screening for women, but pap smear is used as a screening in addition to HPV testing. These are the, the recognized screening tools for pre-malignant lesions. But if we use cervicoscopy to see the, uh, the pre-malignant lesions and to properly examine the uh, cervix, it can be used for cases of suspicious cervix, which I mean cases with uh, abnormal lesion on the cervix or naked eye examination. In, that, in this group of cases, you can do cervicoscopy instead of colposcopy. So don't be confused. Cervicoscopy is not a screening tool for pre-malignant cervical lesions. It is an alternative to colposcopy in suspicious cases or cases with abnormal uh, pap smear. It is not a screening tool. This is essential to be put in mind before uh, discussing the advantages. If we are comparing it to the stationary colposcopy, it is advantageous as it offers excellent view of the mucosa of the whole endocervical canal and the internal os. So you can evaluate the transformation zone, the squamicolumnar junctions, the original and new squamicolumnar junctions, in addition to the whole endocervical canal, the internal os. Also, if you use the uh, delicate or the fine telescope, which is office telescope 2.6, millimeter telescope, you can go far after the endocervical canal, you can go into the endometrial cavity, you can overcome any case of cervical stenosis by negotiation of cervix uh, and go with the uh, kinks of the cervix to reach the end uh, the us. And it has been found that in the absence of lab uh, HPV testing, performing cervicoscopy in, junction, in conjunction with cytology, it can be used as a screening tool in uh, high-risk cases. As I told you, it is not replacing screening tools. It can be used in high-risk cases after post-pap smear, after post-HPV, or you can, if you don't have HP testing, you can replace it, it with pap smearing as a screening in some high-risk cases. It allows free examination of the whole cervix and go inside the endometrial canal is unlike colposcopic lenses, it is not fixed on the uh, ground, it is not uh, stationary. In the scope, you can go forward and backward, you can magnify, you can focus on any minute lesion, uh, and the colposcopy is not allowing you to uh, move forward and backward freely like cervicoscopy. It minimizes pain during examination of the endocervical canal because you don't have to have endocervical spectrum. And it allows examination of the whole uh, genital system. As I showed you, you can go from the cervix into the endocervical canal. You have to wait some time until the extension of the endocervical canal. You have to see the black spot of the internal os. And after seeing this black spot here seen, the black spot, you have to follow it. And this will lead to endometrial cavity. You can see the endometrial cavity, the whole genital system. Uh, the uterus, the cervix, and uh, endocervical canal properly evaluate them and report on the hysteroscopy, the fundus, the tubal ostia. If you see polypi, if you see lesion, suspicious lesions, abnormal vasculature, you can take a biopsy, you can make uh, a proper uh, reporting on this case. This advantage is marvelous if compared to stationary colposcopy which did not, does not allow you to go inside the endometrial cavity. And here you go back and you examine the endocervical canal while you are going back. I told you the examination of the endocervical canal is two parts, when you are going inside and you, and you are going outside the endometrial cavity. Office hysteroscopy is more popular than colposcopy. If you ask your colleagues, you will find that most doctors now have a uh, hysteroscopy in their office uh, to examine the infertility cases, to find out a cause of abnormal trend bleeding, to find out an explanation of recurrent pregnancy loss, and so on. So doctors will buy hysteroscope, particularly office hysteroscope, and actually little number of them buy colposcopy because it's very expensive and is not cost effective. It is uh, just 
for cases of suspicious cervix or abnormal pap smear. And from cost effectiveness view, you can refer this case with abnormal pap smear to a specialized center uh, is much more cost effective than buying a stationary corposcope, particularly video corposcope, which is a very expensive uh, uh, instrument or machine. So in most doctors buy office thoroscopy. So office thoroscopy is more popular than corposcopy. And introduction of cervicoscopy as a new indication of hysteroscopy is a good achievement for all doctors or gynecologists in their clinics, in their office, that you can use this instrument for examination of the endometrial cavity cervix as well as the ectocervix for cervicoscopy. So you are doing two techniques using one machine. You will not pay money for this cervicoscope. You already put uh, the hysteroscope, so use it. Use it for examination of the cervix. Learn about colposcopic examination, basic colposcopic knowledge, basic uh, 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 knowledge about normal and abnormal cervix. So you can proceed to do cervicoscopy for cases with suspicious cervix, and you can use the just very simple and very cheap dyes. Is acetic acid is very cheap. Lugol's iodine test is very cheap. All of them are available at any uh, clinic. So you can apply acetic acid to see acetoate areas, Lugol's to see iodine negative and positive areas. This is very simple uh, advance in your office, in your clinic without being any money. So it is a two in one concept uh, an instrument uh, for hysteroscopy, cervicoscopy as well. And if you need more information and the more data about control, randomized controlled trials comparing office cervicoscopy uh, with stationary corposcopy, you can go through our publication published last year in the Journal of Midlife Health and with many tables and uh, demonstration of the advantages of cervicoscopy over Corposcopy. However, office cervicoscopy is a good complementary but not alternative tool added to stationary corposcopy uh, uh, in suspicious cases because of the results of this study found that the stationary corposcopy also is advantageous, particularly after uh, using the green filter to properly visualize the abnormal vasculature of the cervix. And due to its small caliper, cervicoscopy offers a better evaluation of the endocervical canal, especially in cases of unsatisfactory colposcopy, with the possibility to examine the whole endometrial cavity and cervix. All these are clear advantages of cervicoscopy. So don't hesitate to start performing cervicoscopy for your, for your cases with suspicious cervix uh, or cases with abnormal pap smear uh, or abnormal HPV testing. This is a simple procedure. You can learn it in a short time and uh, you can perform it in your clinic and report on it uh, uh, easily uh, after uh, gaining some uh, experience in this field. If you like this video, please press on like icon. If you need more lectures and videos, please press on the uh, subscribe and notification icons. And if you need more information, you can contact me directly on atif underscore darush at yahoo.com. And see you again. Bye-bye.